Hi, I'm here at Politics and Prose Bookstore with Brad Meltzer, best-selling author of, I think it's eight books now. I don't even write them anymore, so I don't even know. <laughs> well, eight books, five comic books, two non-fiction books, a TV series, Jack and Bobby, and the second season now, I understand, of Decoded on the History Channel? We finished season two, we're now waiting to see if we get season three. Oh. It's, yeah, I love this show. I Absolutely love this show. So, um, you can ask what's Diana Belchase here doing with such a great author? Well, I'm lucky enough to have uh, lived in the same neighborhood as Brad for a while and watched him on his meteoric, skyrocketing career. So, congratulations. Thank you. But even better than that, we are here on the launch day for The Fifth Assassin, which I cannot wait to read. Oh, thank you. So, tell me, what's it about? So uh, a couple years ago, I got a, a reader came to me and said, "You got to come to this museum that I work at that almost nobody knows about in Washington D.C." Mm -hmm. And he said that um, I was like, "Well, what's so important there?" And he said, "Well, we have pieces of John Wilkes Booth, the bones. Mm -hmm. We have pieces of Abraham Lincoln's skull, and we have the bullet that killed Abraham Lincoln. Would you like to come see it?" Yes, I want to come <laughs> see that. Right. So I came here to D.C. and of course I wanted to see it. But what I saw is they didn't just have the artifacts from uh, the Lincoln assassination, but they had pieces of some of the others as well. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, maybe this is the plot for a book, is a serial killer who's meticulously recreating the assassinations mm -hmm. and, and the assassins of all the presidential deaths from John Wilkes Booth to Lee Harvey Oswald, one by one recreating those crimes. And, um, and what if they all work together? What if they for centuries have been working for the same secret cause, and that's where the fifth assassin was born. Oh, I've got shivers. I can't wait to read it. it. sounds very exciting. Now, even more exciting than that, I understand that you were called in recently to do consulting work for the Homeland Security Office. Oh, yeah, that was a while back now. We, um, I did do it. I was part of the Red Cell program. They called me to brainstorm different ways for terrorists to attack the United States, and I kept thinking, if they're calling me, we're screwed. Right? There, we're, we have a problem now. It's, it's a disaster. But I was honored to be part of it. It actually helped inspire the Inner Circle. And a lot of the things you see in the Inner Circle mm -hmm. really came from some of those things there. Well, I think it's absolutely marvelous. You may not know, but if you don't know, you need to run out and buy uh, these two books that Brad did, which is called Heroes for My Son and Heroes for My Daughter. Absolutely marvelous. And one of the things that I love best about this book is Brad doesn't know he's my hero. Oh, yeah. And one of the reasons you're my hero is because you never say die. And um, I absolutely have to say the most inspiring thing to me as a writer was your um, video, um, I Hate uh, Brad uh, Meltzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Brad had written The Book of Lies and had gotten some unflattering and frankly unfair. Yes, <laughs> everything's fair. Reviews. It's all fair. We just, they were just bad reviews. But yeah, we took all the bad reviews together and we embraced them. You should show the clip right here. But uh, <laughs> it was very freeing to be able to, to kind of play them all back and, mm -hmm. uh, and let them be like that. Well, also, I'm so sorry to hear about your mother and your grandmother, who has to be the cutest grandmother on the planet. She was in the video, but uh, one thing that your mom said reminds me a lot of my mom, about how she would love you. Even if I were you, she said, I'd love you if you were a garbage man. And she, my uncle was a garbage man, so she knew plenty of garbage men, but, uh, but she would love me even if I was the, the, the king of England or anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, I love how you always put it all out there, whether you're writing in your books or you're giving interviews or you're undecoded, it's the real Brad Meltzer that you see. It's not a, it's not anything fake. But you once said in one of your books, history doesn't pick people. History picks everybody every day. And I really love that. And I wanted to ask you, what is your idea of success? I see you with your kids, with your wife, how loving your family is, but what is the whole picture of success for you? You know what, if you are enjoying what you're doing, you're successful. And any other measure is going to leave you really sad and disappointed, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, I have to say, I'm looking forward to The Fifth Assassin. And what's next on the plate for you? Uh, working on the sequel. Got to do the sequel. But I told you, I don't even write them anymore. Some kids in Malaysia do it. I don't you know. I just... <laughs> Well, anyway, here on lunch day for The Fifth Assassin at Politics and Bookstore, keep reading Brad Meltzer, keep watching Decoded. We're going to get that third season, right? I appreciate it. And uh, this is Diana Belche saying, keep reading. <laughs>